I'm Joe Scrabbles, executive editor of News for IGN, and I have just played half an hour of Justin Roiland's and Squanch Games's High on Life, which is strange. Here are five things I learned. So number one, this is an unusual kind of a shooter. It is a first-person shooter, and it's not just unusual because your guns and your knife talk to you as you play. What's unusual about it is the gunplay itself isn't your sort of twitch shooter, Call of Duty style, uh, hit scan type weaponry. You are seeing slow moving bolts flying, flying towards you. And the really interesting thing there is that you are getting into situations with lots of enemies at once where it's becoming almost more of a bullet hell game. You're really avoiding projectiles as much as you're taking cover or looking to take people out from interesting positions. So it lends it this quite uh, almost strategic air in places, which sounds weird for a game where giant ants are screaming swear words at you. but. Genuinely, it just feels different. And speaking of giant ants swearing at you, this game is genuinely gross. And I, I know people expect that. This is made by Justin Roiland. He helped create Rick and Morty. People know the kind of content this guy likes. But there are some lines in this that genuinely took me aback. There are some choices you can make in this demo. For instance, uh, I was told repeatedly not to shoot a little guy who was calling me fresh meat because I just entered a slum. Uh, until it did let me shoot him, and then I had to meet his mother. So it's, it's, you know, it's out there. There's genuinely a real sort of grim and grotty sense to the humor, and it works. It really works. And speaking of making those gameplay choices, this game will occasionally give you dialogue trees, but the point of these dialogue trees is not to help you make big changes to the world or do Obsidian or Bethesda-style stuff. It's really about doing the right punchlines, and I encourage you to say the wrong thing whenever you can. The game gives you some options where one of the answers is definitely the right thing to say. Don't do it. You're always going to get to do those things down the line. Play with the jokes. Let the jokes build. You get to make the punchlines. It's genuinely part of the fun to just mess with the parameters and have the game react to you because of it. So we already knew High on Life wasn't an open world game, but it does have open elements. It has a bit of exploration. And as you'd hope for from this crew, these people making this game, it's worth exploring. You can go out into the city, you can have a look around, you can see what's going on. And I just genuinely think it's worthwhile stopping, looking at every little detail. This is a truly bizarre alien landscape you're put in, and you should make the most of it. It is worth going out there and seeing all the little details. And some of the art on the walls is as beautiful as it is strange. And it seems like so much love has gone into building the fabric of this place, as well as the extremely strange story that you're telling within it. It's really good to just go out and have a look. And finally, just a little detail, but when you're in your house location at the very start of this demo, which I assume will be a kind of home base, quite literally, for when you're playing the game, the uh, characters will watch a TV. And it is essentially interdimensional cable from Rick and Morty. There are TV episodes going on, extremely strange things. I saw a couple get a divorce because the lady was out for too long and her meal of two cigarettes got cold. Uh, it's that kind of level of thing. But I was talking to one of the developers afterwards, and it turns out there are four full-length movies in this game that you can watch as well. I didn't get to see what those were. I think we can assume they're going to be pretty strange. But we are essentially, apparently, getting four full-length Justin Roiland movies as part of High on Life, which seems worthwhile to me. I like it. So that's what I learned from High on Life. You can go to IGN.com right now and watch all 25 minutes of what I played earlier. It is worth having a look at. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really bizarre game. It's one of my highlights of Gamescom so far. I like it a lot.